Now, he's, of course, he's absolutely right uh, that we probably should tone it down when we're calling our opponents the end of democracy, the end of Western civilization. We're not helping our arguments. Um, I disagree. I disagree. That's, that's a dumb argument, I think, because you, what? No, you ha it, we're, there, that's their argument, which is that you guys are saying Trump is a threat to democracy. But he is. On Bill Maher's show, uh, Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO, they had a panel discussion about the assassination attempt. And, well, things went a little off the rails there because, well, I'll let you watch. He got shot at again, and he says, um, their rhetoric is causing me to be shot at. And then, of course, in true Trumpian fashion, always the most unself-aware person in the universe, goes on to say, when they're the ones that are destroying the country. <laughs> Which would be also the kind of rhetoric that would make a borderline person shoot at you. But, I mean, he's right, rhetoric has consequences. But he is possibly the worst person to make this case. All right, so again, this is the uh, premise that we're going to talk about political rhetoric and whether it's responsible for violent political acts or attempted violent political acts. But the premise of the discussion we're going to have is Trump's violent rhetoric. In other words, Trump is asking for it. Trump is begging for it. But Trump saying that Democrats and the left are ruining this country is asking for someone to try to kill him. When He's the one who's getting shot at. And the whole point he's making is that it's this stuff that is inspiring people to shoot at him. It's the news media every day of the week calling him Hitler. It's it's the vice president and the president saying that he's an existential threat to our nation. And that gets disappeared. At no point does Bill Maher say, well, here's the stuff that's been said about Donald Trump over the last eight years. Does he have a point? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. The pivot point on the discussion is Trump says that political rhetoric is causing him to be endangered right now from an assassination attempt. So let's look at all of Trump's political rhetoric. Are, are you f kidding me? It's, it's a pretty amazing little jujitsu move there. Yeah, Trump might have a point. Let's look at his political rhetoric. No, 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 that's not the point Trump was making. He was making the point about your political rhetoric. All right, so we turn to Brett Stevens, who I believe is a uh, conservative columnist at the New York Times or something. Yeah, I mean, it's the pot calling the kettle black. I think that's what the expression was 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 basically born I mean, for. he's used it. This is the guy who called the media the enemy of the American uh, people. Scum, vermin. All these, all, all these phrases. Now, he's of course, he's absolutely right uh, that we probably should tone it down. When we're calling our opponents the end of democracy, the end of Western civilization, we're not helping our arguments. Um, I disagree. I disagree. That's that's a dumb argument, I think, because you what? No, you ha it, we're, there, that's their argument, which is that you guys are saying Trump is a threat to democracy. But he is a threat. There we go. All right. So we'll do another pause here, Bill Maher, because, you know, sometimes Bill Maher hits it and sometimes he um, sinks it. And this is a sink. Right. Think about what just happened here. Bill Maher chuckled. And 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 did his, you know, sardonic smirk and shrug when he read when he read Donald Trump's uh, post about how Democrats are ruining our country. And he said, well, you see, this is why he he's a, a target of assassination attempt. But here, not only is he claiming that it's completely OK to say that Trump is a threat to democracy, but he's in fact reiterating and validating that. And he says, no, 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 but it's okay for us to say that about him because it's true. Which, of course, I go back to Pontius Pilate's great statement about truth in the Gospels. What is truth? Because Bill Maher, certainly, he knows exactly what's true, and that is that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy, except for the fact that when Donald Trump was president for four years, he, in fact, didn't threaten democracy. We had a hell of a lot of democracy. In fact, I would argue that we had a little too much democracy in that 2020 election because there were a whole lot of votes that were cast and counted that probably shouldn't have. You can go a little overboard on the democracy. <laughs> so here he is saying, oh, no, no, but it's true. He is a threat to democracy. If he were a threat to democracy, he'd still be in the White House. You moron. But now he basically goes on to make the case in a segment 
about how political rhetoric has gotten out of hand and maybe we should tone it down because it's leading to assassination attempts on Donald Trump. He goes on to make the case as to why all the political rhetoric being said about Donald Trump is absolutely accurate. And if that leads to violence, well, say, lovey. The answer can't be that we can't say what's true. I want to say what's true. And the left has to do that, too. No, I'm sorry, but every time the left calls Trump a threat to democracy, Americans remember that in 2016, guys like me were calling Trump a threat to democracy, and here we are. I don't and think he was and, then. He and that is. dog and that dog is not going to hunt. You have to say the case against Trump is that he's going to be a terrible president who's going to divide the country, that is going to accomplish absolutely nothing, that is going to embarrass us in front of of, of the world uh, and it's going to conduct Hold a miserable on, foreign Brad, policy. But those are policy questions. You don't stop calling out the truth because people aren't listening, right? When Donald Trump tells lie after lie, you don't say, but nobody seems to care. It's our job in the media, right? When people complain, Donald Trump got fact-checked way more than Kamala Harris did. You're damn right he did. You know why? He told more lies. Actually, that's not true. And no one's saying that Donald Trump got fact-checked more than Kamala Harris is. People are saying that Donald Trump got fake fact-checked with actually erroneous information. And Kamala Harris never got fact-checked. But listen to the broader point that Stephanie Rule is making here. Uh, uh, she thinks that Brett Stevens' point is, well, we shouldn't point out these things and tell the truth because it's not having an impact. No, Brett Stevens is saying, you shouldn't say these things because it's going to lead to a bullet in the head. And by the way, it's not true versus false. It's opinion. You're just you're you're providing your opinion. But frankly, the larger issue I think that Brett Stevens should be making and that Stephanie Rule, God bless her, she's not listening to it. But the actual point here is it's not working. It's not working to win the election. You've been saying this about him since day one. You said that he was a, a part of a Russian plot to steal the 2016 election. It doesn't work. Nobody believes you. In fact, Stephanie Rule, Bill Maher, Brett Stevens, the only people out there who do seem to believe you about the atrocious things that you're saying are maniacs who are willing to pick up a gun and do what you want them to do, it appears. And so maybe you shouldn't say these things. Because if it's the truth, and if they're right, and it's just objectively fact that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy, then why is this election even so close? I mean, it's either not true or they just suck at telling the truth. Maybe the question they should be asking, maybe, is why aren't people listening to us anymore? And why don't people believe us anymore? But they don't want to face the reality of that answer. Trump has done nothing but benefit from a campaign that seeks to treat him as outside the borders of political respectability. So if you want to help... He is. He, he, but he's, what he's, you have been doing, he said you. he's going to be a bad president. He's, he, gonna, he's a bad president because he doesn't concede elections, not the policy shit. That's that comes and goes. Look, most Americans realize that here we are. Joe Biden is the president of the United States. Kamala Harris is likely the next president of, of the United States. But the reason that Trump has an enduring appeal on so many Americans is that so, yeah. so many of us in the media want to treat him right, as absolutely beyond the pale. And you know how Trump supporters okay. respond by saying, oh yeah, he's beyond the pale, I'm gonna vote for him. We have done okay. nothing okay. but help Trump. for the That's right, yeah, he's 100% he's right, by the way, but they won't listen to him, and that's the only thing he's right about there. I do love Bill Maher saying that he's a bad president because he won't concede elections, even though, I mean, obviously, he moved out of 1600 Pennsylvania bill. But, but did you notice, he said, oh, forget about the policy crap. That, that, that has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Why do you want to forget about policy? Because the last thing they want you to do is look at how he actually governed as president for four years. As far as they're concerned, January 6th is the beginning, middle, and end of the Trump presidency. And why? Because that's all they've got. It's literally all they've got.
The last thing they want is for voters to decide on things like the economy and national security and border security and crime and education policy and, you know, all the things that Americans care about. Now, they don't they don't want that at all. Trump saw this. He took to uh, True Social. And uh, this was his response. The ratings challenged Bill Maher on his increasingly boring show on HBO is really having a hard time coping with Trump derangement syndrome. He's a befuddled mess, sloppy and tired. And every conversation with B and C list guests seems to start with or revert back to me. This week, he had dumb as a rock bimbo Stephanie Rule from MSDNC on the show, along with the Trump-hating loser Brett Stevens, who seemed totally confused and unsure of himself, very much like Marr himself. Stevens should find himself another line of work because I am driving the failing New York Times absolutely crazy, and it's very hard, perhaps impossible, for a writer to write well of me without suffering the wrath of the degenerate editors who, with a push from the top, have gone insane. I just want to verify something, but I'm pretty sure that was all one sentence. That's impressive. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not worthy. <laughs> they apologized to their readers in 2016 for their complete and total miss, and they'll do it again in November. The failing New York Times is a badly run newspaper that has totally lost its way, put it to sleep. So that's an entertaining response from Donald Trump. And the next thing you know, you know, Stephanie Rule and Bill Maher said, see, see, this is why an assassin should kill him. Because of that outrageous rhetoric. Uh, meanwhile, this morning on Morning Joe, uh, if you were expecting there to be some circumspect sort of discussion about the best way to criticize Donald Trump, considering the fact that we see these patterns of violent behavior uh, projected toward him, well, you'd be wrong. Here they are just beginning the the drum up to the next assassination attempt against the Republican nominee. Do you not call it a threat to democracy when Donald Trump says that he wants to execute the chairman of the Joint Chiefs for treason? Is that not a threat? Saying that, that your vice president deserves lynching? Saying that to your legal counsel on January 6th? Is that not a threat to democracy? Undermining Americans' confidence? And voting when you know, because the Wall Street Journal editorial page has been very clear. And I will say, have done, done the right thing repeatedly, calling out Donald Trump's lies when it comes to widespread election fraud. Is that not a threat to democracy? What exactly is a threat? To, what rises to the threat of democracy that we have ever seen in America since the Civil War? If what Donald Trump has done over the past four years does not. Please give us the permission structure. I know you're desperate for a permission structure not to vote for Kamala Harris and to get people to vote for Donald Trump. Anti anti Trumpism. It is something. If they gave out gold medals for her, you'd get it. You would. But please, tell me. And this is a question Bill Maher was asking this weekend correctly. If this is not a threat to American democracy, what we have seen over the past four years, and if that is somehow hate speech that is riling up violent rhetoric, please tell me. Define for me. What is a threat to American democracy. It's certainly not people going around speaking out against January the 6th. It's certainly not people going out speaking out about a presidential candidate and a former president saying he wants the chairman of the Joint Chiefs executed. All right. So um, I don't know if I want to let him finish because he just gives me a migraine, but we'll, 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 we'll go on in a moment. But I just wanted you to see what he just did there. Again, this is this is why you need to actually watch the, or let me watch it for you and then show you how they pivot and how they lie. Uh, he's saying, well, you can't tell me that's not a threat to democracy. Is that not a threat to democracy? This is a threat to democracy. That's not a threat to democracy. I'll tell you what's not a threat to democracy. People speaking out against him, people people calling out his behavior. People, you're right. Did you see that he did that uh, real fast in case you missed it? Because this is this is clever what they do. If this is not a threat to American democracy, what we have seen over the past four years, and if that is somehow hate speech that is riling up violent rhetoric, please tell me. 
Define for me, what is a threat to American democracy? It's certainly not people going around speaking out. Yeah, see, it's certainly not people speaking out. Well, I'm sorry, has anyone said that people speaking out against Donald Trump is a threat to democracy? No, nobody has said that. No one has said that people on a television show criticizing Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. No, the, the, the story that we're, ha- the, the, the conversation we're having right now in this country about this rhetoric and the demonization and dehumanization of Donald Trump, that's really what this is, is dehumanizing him. They are turning him into such a monster that it's sort of, you know, okay to try to shoot him and try to kill him, right? That's what dehumanization is. If if he's not worthy of the protections and respect that a normal human being would have, then it's okay if you kill him. No, uh, we're not saying that Joe Scarborough and his uh, little uh, friend there, Mika Brzezinski, doing what they're doing is a threat to democracy, as he just claimed we're saying. No, we're saying it's a threat to Donald Trump's safety. That's the question at hand here. And I'd love for him to address that. See, no one's addressing that. You say, the things that you are saying and the way you are saying it is a threat to Donald Trump's safety. And their response is, well, the stuff we're saying is true. And of course, that that's absolutely completely irrelevant. Whether it's true or not, and I would argue that it's not, certainly not the way they're saying it, and I'll prove that in just a second. What we're saying is what you were saying and the way you are saying it is a threat to his safety. And that's proven out now by two assassination attempts. The latest one, as we've just read in his alleged assassination letter, lifts your exact political rhetoric. He sees what you say. He hears what you say. He watches what you say. And it motivated him to try to kill Donald Trump. That's what we are saying. And their only response is, well, what we're saying is true which of course it's not. Let's take a look at what Joe Scarborough uh, makes as his point here. Against January the 6th, it's certainly not people going out, speaking out about a presidential candidate and a former president saying he wants the chairman of the Joint Chiefs executed. Ah, so uh, let's take this. I'm just going to take this one example for you, okay? Because you hear that, and you've probably heard Joe or other left-wing crazy liberals on your Facebook page or what have you, maybe in the cubicle next to you at, at work, say Trump wanted Millie executed. Did you did you know that? Trump called for Millie's execution. Do, do you know what the basis of that is? Do you know what the, because, the, the, right? Because they always have like a little bit of a hook that allows them to extrapolate. So Trump called for Milley's execution. Well, no, actually, Trump did not call for Milley's execution. Trump cited something that General Milley did. We'll talk about what General Milley did in a moment here. He talked about something General Milley did, and he said in a true social post, he said, that act is so egregious that in times gone by, he called it treason, by the way, and he said, in time gone by, the punishment would have been death. That's what Trump said. That You may not like that he said that. You may not like that Trump reacting to something that General Milley did said, wow, a punishment for that kind of behavior in days gone by would have been death. You may not like that. I get it. Whatever. But what you can't do is say Donald Trump is calling for General Milley's execution. Because guess what? Donald Trump did not call for General Milley's execution. Donald Trump said that what General Milley did in days gone by would have been punished by death. Again, you have every right to say you don't like that, but it's you don't have every right to lie about it. And what did Joe Scarborough just say Donald Trump did? And I, people going out, speaking out about a presidential candidate and a former president saying he wants the chairman of the Joint Chiefs executed. I just told you what he said. Did he say that he wanted the chairman of the Joint Chiefs executed? No, he did not. Oh, and by the way, what exactly did General Milley do? that inspired Donald Trump to say that in days gone by, the punishment for that would have been death? Do you know what General Milley did? So Joe Scarborough won't tell you. I'll tell you what General Milley did. General Milley, during the Trump presidency in the final months of the Trump administration, contacted his counterpart in communist China. 
the de facto chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the head of the military operations for the Communist Chinese Red Army. And behind the president's back, undermining the chain of command and undermining Donald Trump without his knowledge, told the head of the Chinese communist military that he would defy orders from Donald Trump if Donald Trump were in any way to call for a military engagement with China. Now, you may think that General Milley was right in doing that. You'd be wrong, but you could say that. But when Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, found out the public reporting that General Milley had done that, and he said, what the hell? This guy was my chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and he's secretly going behind my back to the head military guy of our enemy of China, saying, don't worry if the commander in chief orders for any kind of military engagement, I'll disobey his orders. Well, I, forgive me. I want to go on the record saying I'm not calling for the execution of General Milley. But may I just say that it is a fact, it is a fact that punishment for that kind of behavior in days gone by would have, in fact, been death. But Joe Scarborough takes that and tells his audience on NBC News that Donald Trump called for the execution of General Milley, which he did not. But somebody could hear that and not hear what I just told you and not deliver the facts to you and not deliver the truth in the full context to you. Someone will just hear Joe Scarborough sitting on his show next to his Me Too situation that turned into a happy marriage. And hear Joe Scarborough say that Donald Trump called for the execution of his chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And they might hear that and say, wow, that's, that's beyond the pale, that's outrageous. This man must be stopped. If not me, then who? And that's how we get assassination attempts. And they're just going to keep doing it every single day. And we'll be here to talk about it. We'll be here to call it out. We'll be here to show it to you because I respect you enough. I think you deserve the truth. Those guys don't.